Lu Sheng got into Xiao Yeren's police car and they both started heading towards the first middle school gymnasium. On the way, while Xiao Yeren was driving, Lu Sheng took out his mobile phone and began reading the news. As he read the news, he began to wonder if this was another plan for the human race to fight against themselves. He thought that it was already too much. He began to imagine the image of the martial arts civilization and started thinking that the martial arts civilization would be destroyed within 10,000 years. He thought that this was equivalent to a multitude of incompetent people who were doing their best to cause internal conflict. He couldn't help but get angry, and while he was thinking about the Lion Kingdom, he decided that when he became strong enough, he would eliminate them. Xiao Yeren looked at Lu Sheng through the rearview mirror and, upon seeing that he was getting angry, caught his attention and asked if he had any problem. Upon hearing Xiao Yeren's voice, Lu Sheng snapped out of his thoughts. He closed his eyes, slightly tilted his head to one side, and with a pleasant smile, explained to her that there was no problem and that he was just thinking about some insignificant things. He also added that he would solve all the problems sooner or later. Several minutes later, as they were passing by the first middle school gymnasium, he caught Xiao Yeren's attention and thanked her for the ride. He also asked her to stop the car as he was going to get off here. He got out of the car and said goodbye to Xiao Yeren. She also got out of the car and with a pleasant smile, bid him farewell and wished him a safe trip. As she was looking at him, she started falling in love with him. She placed a hand on her chest and sank into thoughts of love. Despite having just been with him, she began wondering when she could see him again. At the same time, in the first middle school gymnasium, King forcefully hit a boy in the neck causing him to fall to the ground. She adopted an offensive stance and prepared to hit him again. But to her surprise, the boy couldn't take it anymore and while trembling, decided that it was better to surrender than to continue receiving her blows. Seeing that the boy had surrendered, the gym coach declared King as the winner. All the students in the class formed a circle around King, and the coach explained to everyone that King's combat strength was very high, so if anyone had any questions, they could ask her for advice. After the fight, King sat in a corner and while drying off the sweat with a towel, two classmates appeared and started praising her, telling her that if she continued like this, she would become the number one martial artist in the city. King closed her eyes and simply listened to her classmates' compliments without saying anything. Seeing this, the blonde girl approached her and asked why she wasn't happy despite being so strong. King became somewhat confused by the question and replied that it was difficult to be happy because she had a brother who was renowned throughout the country, and every time she compared herself to him, she became sad. The two girls approached King, and with a tender look, the blonde girl told her that after all, her brother was Lu Sheng. They asked her when her brother would be free since he had previously told them he would invite them to dinner. Upon hearing this, King asked them if they were truly in love with someone like him. They ignored her question and began asking her to arrange for them to have a date with him. Little by little, King began to get tired of them, and quickly started running away from them as she couldn't stand them anymore. Seeing that King was fleeing, the two girls tried to stop her but it was in vain since she was no longer willing to listen to them. Several minutes later, she left the gymnasium and as soon as she stepped out, she bumped into a boy because she was distracted. After colliding with the boy, she closed her eyes and asked him to be more careful where he was going. When she opened her eyes, she saw that the boy she had collided with was her brother Lu Sheng. He looked into King's eyes and reached out his hand towards her, asking why she was so careless. She ignored his question and quickly approached him. While looking at him admiringly in the eyes, she asked why he had returned now if it wasn't winter vacation yet. She also asked if he had missed his dear little sister. Lu Sheng looked into her eyes and with a pleasant smile, explained that after finishing his last mission, he decided to come back. Upon hearing this, King started spinning around him and began asking if he had brought any gifts for her. Lu Sheng took off his backpack and while searching inside it, he replied to her that of course he did. King intertwined her hands and while looking at the backpack with intrigue, she asked him what he had brought for her. Deep down, she hoped that her older brother would bring something good from the capital city. But to her surprise, he took out several jars containing the best martial arts tonics and explained that these tonics were the best ones that would help her reach a higher level in skills. Upon seeing the gifts her brother had brought, she was somewhat disappointed, but still took the jars and while looking away, told him that he didn't understand girls. Upon hearing this, he became confused and while touching his cheek, he began to wonder what she was talking about. While he was lost in his thoughts, a basketball started approaching them at high speed. The basketball hit Lu Sheng's face, and upon seeing this, King was shocked. But to her surprise, he stopped the basketball just before it could hit his face. As the person who had thrown the basketball was approaching them, Lu Sheng threw the ball to the side and while looking at King, 
asked if she was okay. She looked into his eyes and replied yes. The person who had thrown the ball was a boy named Zhuang, who was quite angry. While touching his wrist, he looked at King and asked her why she was out of class. She looked at him with disdain and asked him why he was bothering her again. Zhuang approached them, arms crossed, and aggressively confronted Lu Shen, asking her who he was. She took Lu Sheng's hand and replied that it was none of his business. After saying this, she took Lu Sheng and while walking away from him, explained to him that she no longer had time for him. While they were walking away, Lu Sheng simply looked at Zhuang and started wondering who he was. At that moment, Zhuang shouted King's name, and upon hearing the shout, both of them stopped and looked at him, wondering why he was shouting. Zhuang closed his eyes and clenched his fist, telling her that it was okay if she didn't like him. Then he pointed at Lu Sheng with his hand and told her that there was no need to look for an old man like him. Upon hearing this, she became somewhat confused and began to wonder what he was talking about. On the other hand, Lu Sheng also became somewhat confused, so in order to clarify his doubts, he pointed at himself and asked Zhuang if he was calling him old. Deep down, he couldn't believe that someone had just called him old. King approached Zhuang and gave him a strong kick in the groin, telling him to go to hell. After receiving her kick in the groin, he started writhing in pain. Lu Sheng looked at Zhuang, who was covering his groin in pain, and asked if he was okay. With tears in his eyes, Zhuang decided not to give up even if she had done this to him. Without thinking twice, he started running away and asked Lu Sheng to wait for him as he was going to find someone to take care of him immediately. While both were looking at Zhuang, he asked her if he had been chasing her. She replied yes and also explained that he had been bothering her for the past three days and she was already going crazy. She crossed her arms and while she had her eyes closed, she told her brother that if Zhuang wanted to have a chance with her, then at least he should defeat her first in a fight. She asked Lu Sheng if he believed there were boys capable of defeating her at the Bay City First Middle School. He touched his chin and started thinking, and several minutes later he told her that if she ever met someone in the future who suddenly transferred to another school, then mysteriously she would be thinking about it day and night. He also explained to her that the most important thing was the last name, Lin Zio Yi. He asked her to stay away from people with these last names. She approached him and while tapping his chest with a finger, asked him how things were going between him and older sister Yang Yuan. He became somewhat confused upon hearing this and explained that they were only friends. She ignored his response and asked if he had thought about holding hands with Yang Yuan and going to see a movie together. Lu Sheng began to grow tired of King's attitude, so he grabbed her by the cheek and asked her to stop thinking about these kinds of things. She listened to him, and after several minutes she asked him if he had a classmate named Liu Kaiming. He started imagining Liu Kaiming's face and replied yes, also asking her why she was asking this. She explained that Liu Kaiming had not passed the national exams and had joined the army. She also added that he wanted to say goodbye to him, but unfortunately he had already left for the capital by then. Upon hearing this, Liu Sheng took out his mobile phone and saw that he had over 99 messages from Liu Kaiming. While he was looking at his phone, he asked her if Liu Kaiming had really gone to the eastern military region. This is the end of the video, if you guys want to see the next part, then don't forget to subscribe and like the video.